Good morning and welcome to the Church of the Immaculate Conception in Glenville, New York, those of you here, those of you online. Today we welcome you as we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Father Ron Menti, and we have one announcement before we begin. Last week, our tri-parish community began the Lenten Soup Lunch. If you are interested, please see our website or call the parish office to learn more about it or to sign up for soup to be delivered to your home on the Wednesdays of Lent. Let us pray for all who have died on this day. Felicia McNamara, 1983. Marilyn Bidor, 1991. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. My friends, we gather in faith today and we celebrate this first Sunday of Lent, this time of prayer, this time of penance, this time of turning to the Lord in a very special way in our lives and making use of this opportunity to ask God's forgiveness, to seek to grow in our faith and in our love. So let us join together now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The love of God our Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus, the peace and the strength of the Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we come together in faith, let us be mindful today of our need always and now for the gift of God's mercy and God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant to Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm with terrifying power, with signs and wonders. And bringing us into this country, he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord.
love lifted high those who trust in God's name. Call on the Lord who will never forsake you. God will bring you salvation and joy. Be reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, so is justified. One confesses with the mouth, so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these, this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. 
Then he took him and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it's written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes it's very comforting and reassuring to find someone else who has experienced what you are going through. You realize then that you're not the only one. And so you can share your feelings about the situation because someone else understands they've gone through it too. Jesus has been baptized in the Jordan River and now the Spirit leads Jesus into the desert. The desert was a very special place of prayer and solitude for Jesus. But when the 40 days were over, he was hungry and he was tempted by the devil. Jesus, the Son of God, was tempted. And so we are not alone in facing temptations in our lives. Jesus was hungry. It was a time of weakness when the temptation suggested by the devil is that Jesus should turn the stone into bread and eat. Temptations very often and most often come to us in moments of weakness. We are tired or exhausted. We are confused or very upset. We feel alone, we feel abandoned. There's the temptation to do something that we hope will make us feel better. Temptations always place before us something that we believe will be pleasurable or attractive. That's what was true for Jesus and that's what's true for us. The desert was a very special place for Jesus, a place of prayer, a place to pull away, to enjoy solitude and rest. And we are no different, and yet that's where he was tempted the most. And it really isn't different for us. We come to find ourselves relaxing in our homes, and relaxing, with those who are very special to us. But isn't it true that it is in those situations that we find it most easy to offend and to hurt? It's then that we are quick with our cutting remark or expression of anger. It's so easy then to brush someone off, to ignore that person with a very quick and brusque answer. This is the place that is so special for us, and yet it is where we sometimes lack the control that we should have. Sometimes we are tempted to think that temptations come because we don't pray long enough or hard enough. But listen carefully to the gospel. 
Jesus has just spent 40 days alone with the Father in prayer. And what happens next? Temptation comes. We need to recognize that we don't control when or if temptations will arise. They come, and we need to deal with them. Prayer makes us strong in our faith, and we need that strength to say no when we are sometimes tempted. Jesus was able to respond to each temptation that the evil one placed before him. He responded. He thought about what the evil one has said, and he gave his answer. And it's no different for us. We need to respond. We need to recognize temptation when it comes for what it is, and we need to make our choice, our decision. The final words of today's gospel are so important. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. He departed for a time. The devil would return. Jesus would face temptation in his weakest moment in the time that would lead to his passion and his death. When there was this choice or the decision to run away and escape or to stay knowing it meant suffering and even death. But he will not give in to that temptation either. Sometimes we think that we must be doing something wrong. There must be a reason why we face temptation over and over again. But Jesus' experience reassures us today that temptations come because we are human. There is a selfish streak built into our very human nature. And we need to control that as best we can throughout our lives. Our Lenten practices of faith and abstinence and giving up something that we enjoy simply helps us to have that control in our lives. If we can control things in those very simple ways, it will help us to control things when real temptations come along. We are called to do our best, but yet we know and we recognize that we are not the ones who are going to earn our way to heaven. It is God who saves and only God who saves. Eternal life is a gift on God's part. But we are called to do our best and then in the end to trust in God's mercy and forgiveness. The message is clear, we are not alone. Jesus reassures us today that he truly does understand temptation. He is someone that we can turn to and that we can talk to about it. And now we come to the Lord's table for food and nourishment so that we might live our faith as best we can. As we gather here in faith today, let us join with one another in proclaiming what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray, trusting in God, in God's love, God's care, and God's mercy. We come before the Lord now in our words of prayer and intercession. Our response today is, Lord, graciously hear us. For Pope Francis and for all leaders of our church, as they accompany us through the desert, we pray, Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us for leaders of nations to resist the temptations of power and instead choose to be of service to those who have been entrusted to them. We pray, Jesus, Lord, graciously Jesus, hear us. Hear. For the people of Ukraine, those far from home and displaced, and for those in the path of war, that peace and security be theirs. We pray. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. us. For all who lack the daily bread they need to live and the ability to earn a reasonable living, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously Lord, hear, hear us. us. For those discerning the priesthood, that their Lenten journey in the solitude of the desert fully reveal God's call to them, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously Lord, hear us. For our three communities that we remain rooted in Christ in our Lenten desert, remembering that the arid places will soon bloom again. We pray, Lord, Lord, Lord graciously Lord, hear us. For strength against the tempter, for all who struggle with sickness or despair, the isolated and addicted, as well as for protection for first responders, and our medical and military personnel. We pray, Lord, Lord graciously Lord, hear Lord. us. For heaven, for all of our beloved ones who have died, especially Caroline Trzizak, Judith Pomato, Father Jerry Gingrass, Helen Smirstick, Paul Argay, Nicole Salza, Ruth Glasser, and Madeline Trull, who we remember at this Eucharist, we pray, Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. And for our silent prayers that lie deep within our hearts, we pray, Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Most loving and gracious God, pray that you accept the prayers that we raise in faith this day and that you would continue to nourish us in our faith, especially as we gather at the table of your Son. And make our prayer as always through Christ our Lord.
Please stand and pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that these may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joseph and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. prayer of spiritual communion. I wish my Lord to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you with the spirit and fervor of the saints.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended, tempted, but victorious in Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.